What is it that you want? I'm sorry to disturb you at such a late hour. No worries, my son. I'm still quite awake, having just returned from a funeral. Yes, I know. I've forgotten what I wanted. I don't know. May I help you, child? You seem somewhat perturbed. I haven't the strength to cross the threshold. I wish to pray, to cleanse my soul. The church is shut by order of the bishop. But I'm still the vicar of St. Mary's, if that is any use to you, my son. You seem to me a good soul, vicar. But this is a personal matter. There are no secrets from God, my son. If your heart needs comfort, consider me your chapel. For I can be as silent as stone. I've words for one departed. They're not for living ears to hear. Your eyes burn with rage, yet I see the pain that lies beyond. I am here to lighten the burden of all God's creatures. Whatever you tell me is between us and the Lord. Very well, priest, as you seem quite adamant. Open your heart, my son. Tell me what burdens you. With whom do you wish to speak? She was my sister. You seem so troubled by the loss of this girl. What happened to her? She has been laid to rest. That's all you need to know. I see. And how are you feeling, my son? I feel responsible. The pain is consuming me. I have a final question for you, my son. This is of the utmost importance. Ask your question, Vicar. What would you like her to know? I'm so sorry, Mary. I promise to find who is responsible for all this. I'll put an end to this horror. You have been heard, my son, and your burden will lighten if your words are sincere. Go in peace now and live your life in the way she would have wanted. Whatever happened on this dock is between my sister and I. It does not concern God at all.
Welcome back, Dr. Reed. Good evening, nurse. How should I address you? Dorothy? Dorothea? Miss Crane? Dorothy is all right. If you don't mind me calling you Jonathan. That's fine with me. What can I do for you then, Jonathan? How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? I don't know whether you have undertaken your own patrols or examinations, but local health seems stable. How are things going in the dispensary? Things are going fine, since we made our arrangement. Do you have many patients? A few, but most of them just pass through and go back home, especially since those vigilantes stormed the building on the night you were here. Have there been any more attacks by the uniformed men? No. It looks like they have found another business to extort. How are things going in the dispensary? Things are going fine, since we made our arrangement. I hope you've stopped jeopardizing this facility with your illegal business, Dorothy. Yes, I have. Most of the time. But the blackmail money is too useful to stop it completely. I just target less dangerous people. Who is the current victim? I would rather you did not know. You are my client, not my accomplice. Besides, I'm much more cautious since the first time you found me. Why did you blackmail Lady Ashbury? She's a generous person. You could have asked her for money directly. She killed those patients, I'm sure of that. I know you like her, but that gingerhead has a taste for blood. Tell me about yourself, Dorothy. There is not much to say. My real name is Dorothea Krasunescu. I was born in Romania. And I may have been the best nurse Pembroke ever had, before you fired me. Do you regret your time at Pembroke? I miss the energy. There was so much to do, so much to learn. Even though I was double-crossing the board, I felt I was part of something worthwhile there. Do you think about going back to Romania? Once the war is over and the epidemic here has been contained. Jonathan, this war will be over long before you will see any improvement in Whitechapel's sanitary situation. Do you need medical help, Dorothy? I'm a professional nurse. Rest assured, I'll ask for your help if I need it. Are you not afraid of dying? The epidemic is deadly and very contagious. I'm more afraid of being locked in a cell. I've seen what most hospitals do to the sick staff. They keep them hidden to avoid panic. Do you trust me? You forced me to resign after you caught me trying to save a dying patient. Of course I trust you. You're a blackmailer, just like me. Show me what you have in stock, please. It's locked, all right. Good evening.
Have you any news on Nurse? I can't believe that people are naive enough to trust her med. I'd like to see what kind.
remember you. You're doing. You made me. Made me this creature. What are you? I am the land. You are our champion. You selected me. Chose me. As shall my children yet to come. What is it you seek? This age is sickly. An ancient poison, an older rage, brewed in a cauldron newly forged. This has something to do with the epidemic. Seek truth, my champion. Defeat the serpent. I've had enough of others making decisions for me, pretending to know how I should feel or behave. So the vampire who made me is some sort of disembodied entity? Or was he just projecting this vision in my mind? <sighs> Maybe Edgar can help me with this one. God protect us. You've got a leech in the hospital. Uh, yes, my hospital. My mission is to heal while you go about warring. You've set the table for a snake. I wonder why there's venom in your food. I'm growing tired of your song. You're a woodsman, McCullum, not a doctor. Return to your hunt. Remember, I've a good nose for machinations. I can flare the scent at a mile. You can't hide from the guard. Leave him, Jonathan. This is sacred ground. Neutral territory. And I just had the carpet cleaned. By the sacred stole, this is very bad news. Bad news indeed. What happened? The hospital has been attacked. We have injured patients, at least one dead and several missing. This has spiralled out of control. Even the most infirm are asking to be allowed to return home. We cannot have the people lose faith in this institution. This hospital is their only hope. Of course, you're right. But we cannot afford a public scandal, it would ruin us. We must restore order, and quickly. You mentioned a dead patient. Who is he? She, Jonathan. She was Miss Harriet Jones. I found her room like a slaughterhouse. Blood everywhere. The duty nurse is taking care of the mess.
Very well. I'll help you. I know this place means something to you. I have noticed how you suppress your appetite when around the staff and patients. You need to know you can trust me, Edgar. I do, dear fellow, I do. Please then, tell me. Sean Hampton, the man we thought we'd saved at the docks. It seems he was infected after all. So Hampton became more beast than man. Exactly. And now guard of Prewen suspects the hospital of vampire activity. Do you realize what that could mean for us? Well, they are not far wrong. The hospital is almost crawling with vampires. McCullum is a fanatic. The guard will stop at nothing. You, you don't know what they're capable of, Jonathan. Very well. Since I brought Mr. Hampton here, I will put an end to this. If you don't mind, I have a few questions. Well, I'd be delighted to help you if I'm able. I just recently met the strangest creature in Whitechapel. He was immense. He mocked me and accused me of hypocrisy. Perhaps it was a skull. London's streets are overflowing with them these days. It was a vampire, all right. But what kind, I'm not sure. He was large and very fast. If you find anything more about this creature, the Brotherhood would greatly appreciate any information you could spare. He was observing me with the obvious intent to do me harm. His very presence evoked a palpable sense of menace. You need to be careful, Jonathan. You've no idea what this creature really is. I recently tried to enter a church. It has been a very unpleasant experience. The Brotherhood's research on the matter of faith and vampirism has proved somewhat insubstantial, to say the least. Is this proof that I'm cursed in the eyes of the Divine? The wrath of the Almighty? There's no way of knowing. It could be subconscious guilt, or irrational fear, or deep-seated beliefs. It's hard to explain in terms of science, that's for sure. I'm sure Lady Ashbury will have far greater insight into this matter than little old me. What exactly happened here while I was absent? Hampton turned, quite violently as it happened. Lurking about, attacked Miss Jones. To say he created quite a commotion would be an understatement. Are you sure it was Hampton that killed Miss Jones? Well, there was blood everywhere, but no body. And you know the state she was in? I fear for what he did with her. Hopefully he just hid the corpse. How did the guard of Prewen come to hear of this? McCullum has spies everywhere. He will jump at any opportunity to disparage the Brotherhood and show his contempt. Who was that man in your office? Geoffrey McCullum, actual leader of the Guard of Prewen. I suspect he's the man behind the rebirth of this old and dusty society. They know I'm here now, don't they? I can guarantee one thing. The Guard of Prewen would never dare to attack the hospital while I'm in charge here. What do they hope to achieve? Their ultimate goal is the eradication of all vampires in the country. They see you as a threat to mankind, Jonathan. Thank you, Edgar. If you don't mind, I have a few questions. Well, I'd be delighted to help you if I'm able. Thank you, Edgar.
Sean Hampton lives and breathes for the well-being of his flock. There's no other place he would go but the docks. Good evening, Miss Howcroft. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm. Is there anything you can tell me about the recent commotion here? Many things can happen under cover of night, Doctor Reed. But I took no part in this massacre. But did you see or hear anything? I can't say I did. But the smell of fresh blood almost made me faint, Doctor. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. What can you tell me about the recent events in the hospital? That Mr. Hampton killed Miss Jones in her room, then ran away. And did you see all this? No. I was working by the tents when it all happened. I only entered the room when they asked me to clean up the blood. Where is Miss Jones's body? I don't know. I'd imagine the morgue. It all happened so quickly. Did you see Sean Hampton leave the hospital? I think I saw a silhouette exiting the hospital gates after the shouting started. At first I thought it was someone who was just scared, but well, maybe it was him. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. What on earth happened here? Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Doc. Can you tell me anything about recent events at the hospital? Before the shouts and the noises, I think I heard whispers coming from the stairs. Two voices, maybe more. Did you recognize the voices? What did they say? I couldn't hear. Sounded like they were arguing or something. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. my eyes, poor woman, butchered by some savage scowl. Yes, and I'm afraid I'm at least partially responsible. The man, the scowl, I brought him here. Jonathan, how could you say such a thing? Forgive me if I feel despondent. But there seems to be no end to the suffering and death that surrounds us. I'm always here for you, Jonathan. What do you know of Ascalon? I was threatened by a creature, a vampire in Whitechapel, stating I had to obey the law of conduct. What more can you tell me about him? He was bigger than a man. Huge, in fact. He seemed to radiate violence. I thought he was going to tear me apart. Then he vanished. Fergal, the executioner of Ascalon. You were fortunate he was not after you, but rather outdoing his master's bidding. 
What is Ascalon? The Ascalon Club are the most powerful vampires in Britain and exert tremendous influence. Take my advice and stay well away. I have experienced a certain difficulty when faced with holy symbols or trying to enter religious buildings. Have you? Now that's quite a question. I don't know why, but yes, it has happened to me. Is this a sign? A hand of God in action? Are we repellent unto heaven? I don't have the answers, Jonathan. But I believe superstition and magic is just fact awaiting the lens of science. Aren't you frightened? Very little scares me, my dear. To be compelled to avoid symbols of faith does not concern me. Have you embraced this woman, like the other patient, this Mr. Renfield? Her name was Amelia. And no, I did not kill her. I vowed a very long time ago that I would never take another life, unless they ask. Is there sufficient vitality in the blood of the sick and dying patients? Yes, Jonathan. The hunger gnaws at me every waking hour. Frankly, I'm starving. Temptation surrounds us. Rich, vital. How can you resist? Over the years, any pleasure I once gleaned from feeding is long gone. I drink for sustenance. And though I still thirst for more, I restrain myself. Thank you, my lady. I hope to see you again soon. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Someone killed Miss Jones in her room, and Mr. Hampton's gone missing. Doesn't take a genius to piece it together. You don't seem shocked by any of this. Why should I be? Whoever did this must be long gone by now. And besides, he got rid of the old bag. Goodbye, Milton. What can you tell me about the recent... All I know is I ain't letting anyone rip my throat out in my sleep. I found myself a nice play, Doc. <laughs> I'm ready. I'll leave you.
is so difficult every time. That is better. That is better. I will make it through one more night. Good evening, Nassau. Good evening, Doc. What can you tell me about- Everybody's afraid. Death has always been a frequent visitor. But murder? How can we cope with that? As a nurse at this hospital, it is your duty to deal with these things as best you can. Yeah. Until it's my turn to have blood spread all over the walls. I entered the room first, Dr. Reed. I've seen what that monster did to the woman. Goodbye, Nas. Good evening, Nas. Good evening. Tell me, nurse, did you know Dr. Tippetts was addicted to medication? I suspected this behavior for some time, but never dared to ask him about it, until the day he confessed to me. Why would he confess to you about his addiction, Nurse Brannigan? Don't you know you doctors can't hide anything from a nurse? We're always there, even if you don't notice us. Do you consider yourselves our confessors, Nurse Brannigan? I wouldn't dare, Dr. Reed. But I'm intrigued. How did you discover Dr. Tippett's secret? What can I say? I seem to have a knack for discovering secrets. And for hiding them as well. Do you approve of his addiction? Of course I don't approve. But I understand he needs it to fight the exhaustion. Let's hope he'll stop injecting himself once the epidemic is over. And what if he doesn't? Then we'll have to convince him to stop. I believe he's still in control of his addiction, for now. But we must remain vigilant. Goodbye, now. Good evening. And good evening to you, Doc. Can you tell me anything about the re- I'm sure it was not your fault, Dr. Reed. My oh, nothing. It's just... I heard it was you who brought the murderer inside our walls. But you couldn't know, could you? Goodbye, Doctor. Good evening. What can you do? It's a disgrace. How on earth can patients be attacked in their own rooms? Goodbye, Mr. Blaming me will not further your agenda, sir. How long is it going to take to fix me properly? A month? A year? Good evening. Good evening, Doc. Please. I heard Miss Jones call for help from her bedroom. There were some loud noises, like people fighting. All of a sudden, it went quiet. And then the nurse started screaming. Do you know who the nurse was? Not sure, but I think it was Nurse Hawkins. Goodbye for now. Good evening. I'm okay. What can you tell me about- I heard shouting coming from the first floor. I was asleep when it started. I have to- I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. I'm quite...
What can you tell me about Nothing like this would have happened if we'd had enough staff and proper shifts. So you don't think the blame is ours? We all hold fast here, Dr. Reed. Our methods may differ, but we are all trying to make a difference. Thank you for your... Good evening. Can you tell me... Oh, goodness me. This whole story is such a shame, sir. I have no idea how it happened. What are you talking about? Poor, poor Miss Jones. Her body is missing. Someone stole it. Miss Jones's body has gone missing? Yes. The body was brought here this morning. And now it's gone. Who could have stolen a corpse? That's exactly what I asked myself for the whole day. Who could do such a thing? These are terrible and shameful times, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Mr. Chidana. It's locked, all right. I cannot enter. Good evening, Dr. Tim. Dr. Reed, any good news? Can you tell me anything? It's a tragedy, pure and simple. The hospital is meant to be a safe haven to all. We failed the people who trusted us with their care. Do you think I should not have brought Mr. Hampton back here? It's not your fault. You rescued that poor soul. It was the Christian thing to do. But we should have noticed his instability. I know you're taking drugs, Corcoran. Why take such a risk? I need it to endure the long shifts. We have no idea how long the epidemic will last. We can't let it win. It's only a matter of time before other people discover it. And it could cost you your job. Usually, I am a very cautious man, Dr. Reed. But I am not afraid to lose my position. I just want to continue to help as much as I can. Nurse Branigan has been recently accused of neglecting her professional duties. Tell me what you really think about it. This kind of protest is nothing but elitist bullshit. I trust Nurse Brannigan with my life. She has what it takes to be a great doctor. Do you really think she could be the next Elizabeth Blackwell? Believe me, Dr. Reed, a time will come when skill and skill alone will determine who can be a physician and who cannot. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Good evening. 
Goodbye, man. Hello again. Good evening, Doctor. Goodbye, Miss.
locked, all right.
Watch yourselves! This!
Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. And who are you? Ah, some fancy gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name, then? The name's Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. Are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck. You must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. But, nah. You've been a soldier. I can respect that. So, tell me about your gang, then. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, all right? The wet boot boys work for me. All of them. Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because of me. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And if Weiner says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient. My sweet queen of the docks. I know you're looking for an honest job, Booth. You're tired of this criminal life, aren't you? It's just an idea. Edwina loves to run things so much. You can never really leave the gang. Wet boys for life, you know. Do you know where I can find Sean Hampton? I need to talk to him. The sad saint. Why on earth do you want to talk to him? He was one of my patients at the Pembroke Hospital. Oh, yeah. I heard the poor bastard had been abducted by some cat. You, you better ask Tom Watts. He knows Sean Hampton well. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I ain't paying any bill left by clay. I'm not here to collect payment, miss... Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want, then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? What can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things. And I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. You're quite blunt, aren't you? I like people who know what they want and say what they think. This is a time of great opportunity for those ready to embrace their destiny. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time.
What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. Really? Don't you think that's a little bit excessive? Bastards. All of them. This region only responds to violence and threats. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses in a mass grave. That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe. You still use your husband's name, Edwina. Why is that? Why shouldn't I? He may be a bloody bastard, but I'm still his wife and his name means something round here. You never paid him a visit at the Pembroke Hospital, did you? And I don't intend to. In Clay's case, I'm not against a medical mistake or a little help from the Spanish flu. Ooh, Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. I believe you manipulated Booth Digby to get everything you wanted from him, both inside and outside the bedroom. The poor bastard is good to me, if you must know. He makes me feel good, and that's a first. So you're just like any other couple, after all, are you not? Yeah, we're so ordinary that I'd put a bullet in his head if he ever cheated on me. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. What happened exactly? I don't know and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard, but he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened, but you executed him anyway? No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory, and this is our law. And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Dr. Reed, when used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies, just like that? Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? The sad saint? I heard he was mugged or something. Yes, he was. But he left hospital recently. You don't say? Well, I suppose it's good news for the homeless and the useless. Ask them, they must know something. Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. About the man you killed, Booth. What happened? One of us had been killed, so we had to retaliate. That's the whole story. There has to be more to it than that. No, really. One of us got killed, so the killer had to die. That's how things have always been done round here. No one gives a shit. Don't you see it's an endless spiral? One day, it will be you who will be stabbed, or shot, or worse. That's what my sweet Edwina always says, that one day I'll get it too. 
But she says it with the most beautiful smile, my Edwina. Do you know, Edwina suspects you to be unfaithful. Edwina's the one who asked to be called Mrs. Cox, even though Clay hadn't touched her for such a long time. You have not answered my question. She's a passionate woman. I've no doubt she'll shoot me down if I ever betray her, but that's not going to happen. I love her as she is. Goodbye. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Doctor. Goodbye, Miss Cox. 